probably one of the biggest things is we were able to, we practiced early in the morning and the ice was ready for us. Like as soon as the rink opened, it was always open early. So I would get on the ice probably half hour, 45 minutes early every day, pretty much. And uh, just get out there. And, and we really worked on having the first couple of times I would just go out there and kind of do the butterfly and, and shoot around. But after we talked and, and made that for sure plan, then I would go out there and, and do specific skills that I needed to, that I thought would get me to that next level and, and improve my game on. And just doing that day in and day out, and it definitely improved for sure, like huge, and, and just kind of got me to that level, right? And, and uh, yeah, even, and then the off ice, same thing. Um, kind of some guys would end up just not kind of going hard or doing the right things and just messing around and just seeing that kind of motivated me to, to dial it in and, and just show that like I was the only guy not committed and these guys are kind of messing around a little bit. So right. definitely pushed me to get to that next level and, and say like, it's got to come somehow. If I do the right things, good things happen to good people. So that was Carson good. And you are listening to the up my hockey podcast with Jason Padolan. Just watch me now. Welcome to Up My Hockey with Jason Padolan, where we deconstruct the NHL journey, discuss what it takes to make it, and have a few laughs along the way. I'm your host, Jason Padolan, a 31st overall draft pick who played 41 NHL games but thought he was destined for 1,000. Learn from my story and those of my guests. This is a hockey podcast about reaching your potential. Hey there, and welcome back to the Up My Hockey podcast with Jason Padolan. I am your host, Jason Padolan, and today we get to speak to one of the newest members of the Cranbrook Bucks of the W or the BCHL, Carson Good. Carson is an 18-year-old hockey player who has been working with me for the past 18 months, and Carson's story is so fun to share, and it's so fun to celebrate because he is a true example of what happens when we can get our mindset aligned with our actions and with our habits and being committed to a goal and to a dream with the right support at the right time. Now, with all my athletes, I give them 100% of the credit and 100% of the acknowledgement because they need to do the work, right? Information is one thing. Support is another thing. But if you can't follow through and if you can't commit when coach isn't there or when mom or dad isn't there or when someone like me isn't there, then all that information and all that good stuff means absolutely nothing. And Carson was able to follow through and put this stuff to use. And in the bleak year of COVID with no games, no one being able to watch, no one even being able to see the work that he was putting in, he stayed true to his goal. He stayed true to the process And he came out on the other side, a better hockey player, a stronger hockey player, a more desirable player, and a heck of an amazing person, somebody that you'd want in your locker room. So during this episode, we talk about what it's like, one, to work with me, two, Carson's journey, the ups and downs, the places to celebrate. There is so many learning options for those players out there and you parents out there right now who want to one day play in the USHL or in the BCJHL or the WHR or the OHR or the QMJHL and you're not sure how to get there or what you're supposed to do, Carson got to one of the best placing leagues, advancement leagues for D1 scholarships in North America without an agent, without a representative, just by doing the work and by finding a way in, not being denied. So there's a lot to learn here in this uh in this uh, in this interview, Carson does a great job. I know he was nervous for it. He was so graceful and uh, and great and, and gracious in coming across and saying, "Yeah, I'll do this for you." Um, and uh, and it was great to be able to celebrate him. Uh, on the heels of this, though, my peak potential project. Everything that we talk about here in this interview, um, the things, the tools, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, everything that I work with my private clients on, I have now put into a four-week program called the Peak Potential Hockey Project. It's four weeks long, and there's four different mindset topics exclusively designed by me for hockey players who want to get to whatever level they want to get to, to want to be the best players that they can be. 
There, there are four integral themes. Each week is different. Each week is valuable. Each week is informative. And each week you can apply instantly to your game uh, and also your life off the ice. I support the, the players in the program. Every week we have a group coaching call at the end of each week to discuss what was learned, um, to make sure that we're, we're using it <clears throat> and we're applying it and we can work through any challenges. And uh, the program has been massively successful. Uh, and the next program starts no, um, Monday, the 20th of September. So if you're listening to this right now and you want to get in, now is the time. Um, it's such a great product. I'm really, really excited about it. I'm super confident with it now. We've ran the program three times. The athletes are getting a ton of success from this thing. Uh, parents are loving it. I think it's the best investment you can make in your hockey player right now, and I'll stand by that. So um, check it out. It'll be in the show notes. It's at on my Up My Hockey website, upmyhockey.com. You can find the Peak Potential Hockey Project. You can register today. Uh, now let's listen to this great interview with my private client, Carson Good. All right, my man. Looks like the clock's ticking here. Uh, we are live. We are live. We are live with Mr. Carson Good from his new home in Cranbrook, one of the newest members of the Cranbrook Bucks. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Carson. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, no worries. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, I've been waiting for those darn Cranbrook Bucks to announce it for so long. I know we talked yeah. about it earlier um, about you know, what that would be like. And am I, do you mind if I celebrate you when they do this? And you're like, no, man, it's okay. But geez, they, they, they took their sweet time, but then they finally announced it and we were able to celebrate you a little bit. And this is just really an extension of that. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, but the listeners don't know, we've been working together for almost 18 months. I actually didn't even look in the calendar, but it's been a while and um, yeah. a little bit more than that. And what a ride, like what a ride. Yeah. And it, I mean, I'm just so stoked for you and, and where you're at right now that I was like, we got we to gotta chat about it. I mean, we got to chat yeah. about it because I think it'd be good for others to listen to. And I also think, well, I know it would be good just for you and I to kind of just yeah. go down memory lane a little bit and just see where where we've gotten to from where we started. So um, yeah. first of all, massive congratulations. Uh, Thank I'm you. so pumped you're in the BCHL. You're, uh, you're a Cranbrook buck. Uh, that one mini dream, mini goal has come true. Um, mm -hmm. You're now in the right spot to get noticed and to get recognized and recruited for your D1 dream job. Um, so yeah. awesome job. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, no worries. Um, so let's rewind because that's really where we're at. And first of all, thanks to everyone who's joining here. By all means, um, you know, we're this will probably be a podcast. I'm, I'm pretty sure it will be, but uh, we're keeping it close and personal, intimate here in the group right now, live. So if anyone wants to congratulate Carson or ask him a question uh, along the way, by all means, please, um, please do that. I'm, I'm sure he'd appreciate the support. So, yeah, let's go back 18 months. I mean, your NAX, um, it was your first year there, uh, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. And um, and your father reached out and said, hey, I got I got I got this this boy of mine that uh, is a good little hockey player. And I just want to give him the support that he needs. And um, and right from the get go, uh, you were in my mind, you were really receptive to the idea. I, I know that we, mm -hmm. we kind of had to get to know your call and see how it was at. But what was that like for you just right at the start? You know I mean, like this guy, Jason Padol, and you didn't really know who I was or what I was all about or even really yeah. what you were getting yourself into. But kind of what were your thoughts mm -hmm. and feelings at that point? Uh, it was pretty new. I think I learned, um, or found out about you from another person kind of thing. And my dad reached out and we went from there. But I think as soon as I hopped on that first zoom call kind of thing, just to introduce myself and, and get to know you a little bit, I knew that, yeah, definitely something I need to and want to have kind of to help me out. And yeah, I definitely clicked. So cool. And so yeah. if you, I know it's so tough because like, you know, we're like rivers, right? We're flowing. We don't really notice the change as it's happening, but we are changing. Yeah. So like to put yourself back there 18 months ago, like what do you think one, if you could describe yourself as a hockey player, like where do you think you were at? And and if there was something that you needed to work on or you thought that you wanted to work on, what would that have been? Uh, I'd probably just say kind of didn't really have um, too much confidence. I was pretty kind of down on myself and just a little bit, off in a way I guess as it kind of moved up levels it got harder and harder and kind of thing and I could definitely keep up but just looking for that extra edge kind of thing and, and that little bit of support mentally and kind of that could trickle down to my physical game and stuff like that just some some helping tips and stuff and yeah I think 
just that confidence was probably the biggest thing and that started off with kind of asking for your help and, and allowing you kind of to help me with that was probably one of the biggest things to to start that confidence growth up and stuff so yeah that's phenomenal um you touched on a couple of things there and like lots of players one which i've acknowledged with you in the past but like being open enough to accept support like mm -hmm. the that's an issue, especially at the age, like yeah. even right now, your age, like I remember being that age. I know it's like a million years ago for probably in your eyes, but it's like, yeah. like I thought I kind of had it all together, you know, like, yeah. it's like, you know, I kind of got this, but like to be able to mm -hmm. say, you know what, I am going to get some help and I'm going to be open to receiving this and not mm -hmm. necessarily that there's anything wrong. Right. There yeah. was nothing like wrong. No, you weren't broken. Sure. There was nothing. Yeah. Carson good, like was failing at, but you just knew you no. could be better. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And I think isn't that, that's, yeah. and that's what I talk about. We talk about all the time is that aspect mm -hmm. of like, just how do we get better? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Sure. And it's kind of yeah. a different thing because I think once, once athletes can kind of get over that fact of, I don't have to like put an arrow on my back and say, there's something wrong with me. I'm broken. Mm -hmm. I need work, but it's just like, I can probably be a little better. I know that's I can get a little edge. better. I know there's areas that I pr probably can improve at that I'm not even aware of yet. And and yeah. to be willing to just say, yeah, let's do this. Like, and I, So I want to congratulate you on that because you have always yeah. been from day one, like massively receptive, very curious and coachable. Yeah. So, I mean, those yeah. are all great, great traits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's be, me being available definitely starts too with kind of the relationship that we built and kind of how we started off and just it felt easy, easier to do that, right, than definitely could have went down a different road and been tough to do that, but it just kind of, it flowed pretty nicely with me and you and it, and it worked out to be really good. So. Right. One of the things, um, just cause I, as you touch on that, I mean, and I'm kind of ex even just acknowledging our relationship now and how it was then, uh, because I was an outside person. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I told you from day one, I'm like, it's my job to make whatever you want come true. Right. Like that's, yeah. that's all I'm here to do. Um, yeah. did you think that was awkward, normal, like better, like that you didn't know me, that I was outside of your inner circle, had never seen you play hockey before. Like how, how was that for you in your mind as the athlete? I think that was good and bad. Like I think mostly good because then it's kind of like you don't have your own opinion on me as of then. So I could kind of, whatever I told you, you had to kind of give and, and go and work with. Right. So yeah. if I, if I lied kind of thing, then obviously our course would have been a lot different. So, that allowed me to tell the tell the truth and like actually what I need and what I need to be to be better and be where I want. So then it kind of then you could help me with that right and and get the ball rolling. So I think just not knowing you kind of it definitely was different, but it it opened my comfort zone and kind of thing and it allowed me to just yeah tell you exactly what I need kind of thing and I was pretty comfortable with it. That's a great point. I never really thought of that before because we all. Yeah, when people know us and we know them and maybe we have to interact on a day-to-day -day basis and I know dad or mom or the coach or blah, blah, yeah. blah, right? Like <clears throat> you maybe augment what you're going to say because you, yeah. you're supposed to say a certain thing, right? So yeah, that's an interesting exactly. point. Um, just to be able to bring that up and be completely raw, honest and say, hey, this is where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really wild. And so when we started, like you said, so I, I did watch you play. So we, we'd been working mm -hmm. together for a little bit and then I came out because you, you, know, you were playing in Penticton and I came and watched. Yeah, yeah. and... Um, I was glad that I did because as you said, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think you were you were underperforming your skill set. Right, right. Would you agree with that? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. So so seeing you play and seeing the way you move and seeing the way you handled the puck and what you were able to do, yet you were playing really within yourself, I felt. Like yeah. you weren't you weren't really ready to throw yourself out there and make some mistakes. And so right. even though you were honest with me with that, with that with that assessment, saying, Hey, I'm hard on myself, right? I'm really hard on myself. I don't like screwing yeah. up and like making mistakes. I'm gonna have a hard time recovering from them. I was able to see like, holy crap, like you got you got some potential here. I mean, there's mm -hmm. something to work with. So um for me that was that was exciting. And then it yeah. was like trying to find the way for Carson to believe in that, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah, I am good enough. And you mentioned something before we even got on the on the air that was uh, kind of one of the first moments where you're like, oh, this is maybe working for me. You want to talk about what that was? Yeah, just um, the kind of couple things as we as we grew, we kept getting new and new and different things that I could try to like experiment with and see what worked, what didn't. And one of the biggest things was probably that changing the t channel kind of thing that metaphoric tv in your head that you can just 
whether it's something bad or negative or a bad shift, just take that TV remote and switch it right away. And that's something that I definitely really believed in. And that kind of caught my eye and, and definitely helped me a lot. Cause it, it, it is true. And it kind of made sense to me, like it clicked. And that was something that I still do to this day is, is use that TV remote as much as possible. And it was, it's definitely hard. You, you got to work a lot at that, but it's pretty cool. Cause you don't have to just use that in hockey either. Like anything in life, you can practice that. And it's, it's definitely a really good tool for anything in life, not just hockey. So. Yeah, no, perfect. And for those of you just tuning in, like uh, on, on my peak potential project, uh, and because obviously like the things that I'm teaching and training and working with these guys on, like I said, that was 18 months ago we were starting with like now, now I usually use the term closing the gap um, because mm -hmm. closing the gap is such a term in hockey, like for defensemen and it's defensive uh, analysis. Yet right. it's so critical for your mental agility because you want to be able to close the gap or change the channel, right? From right. like the negative emotion, the negative state, the negative thoughts that are happening that are putting you in that state to boom, reset, refocus, come back, mm -hmm. find a state that works for you, right? Yeah. And um, and like you said, I'm glad you said it. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen just with one conversation. It doesn't happen yeah. overnight. It, it takes you being willing to practice it every time you can practice it, right. um, which I think is a great segue to the golf game because yeah. um, one, of the, one of the things we had chatted about, um, and I won't put you on the spot because I, even though you're my prime, my prime, uh, my prime student, you may, you may feel, fail the question, <laughs> but it was the core four. We worked on the core four and I, I'm all about beliefs. I'm all about trying to impart beliefs and instill beliefs in you that you're going to be able to carry with you wherever you are wherever mm -hmm. you go. And one of them is there's always an opportunity. So we talked about this was in the off season, which is another thing. A lot of people say, Oh, how do you work on hockey mindset in the off season? And I, I'm like, cars, this is the perfect time to work on it because it's yeah. not all on the line, right? Like you're not out there trying to win a game in overtime. Like this is, there's no hockey even close. All yeah. these, all these tools and tactics and strategies can be applied in anything in any moment. And golf is such an amazing game to do it with too. Mm -hmm. And you applied it in golf, but it wasn't the way that I would have thought originally that you would have applied it. Um, and maybe I'll yeah. set it up just a little bit. So Kars yeah. goes out um, for this round of golf with his buddies. Uh, it turns out that eight people show up that he wasn't really expecting. And he got put in a foursome with some younger kids. And there's nothing wrong with these younger kids. It was just that they were less experienced in golf than Carson, three or four years younger. So things that they thought were funny, he necessarily didn't. And the way they played the game wasn't quite the way he thought they should play the game. And it took a little long. And anyways, he came back from that, from that round and said, that was really frustrating and really annoying. And I wasn't really happy being out there for the four and a half hours. And we talked about, there's always an opportunity. And we talked about the the ability of maybe being able to take at this as like something that Carson wanted to work on, which was leadership and which was being a good role model example and maybe working on some patience. And anyways, let's just talk about the next time he shows up, guess out of the blue, coincidentally or ironically, or maybe it was a gift from the universe. It's the exact same force. Right. And then yep. and talk about that next time out. They just kind of after we talked about that first time, it was implementing what we talked about and and that those solutions to that problem kind of thing right and a totally different round like not it was probably one of the better rounds of the summer kind of thing right like it was enjoyable and you're relaxed and and just having fun out there not even thinking about how long it, or it was or who it was with or anything like that it just totally switched that kind of switch in my mind and it just implemented those things whereas the first round i was totally bad and upset and and kind of right off the hop it just triggered me and then I was done for the rest of the game and then yeah like it played good and actually I had fun right and you weren't weren't stressed out and kind of didn't flip me right off the bat when I seen them coming up again and golfing with them again right so, yeah it, it worked out pretty good well the amazing part to me was um which and this applies to everything so like the hockey players that end up listening to this or I mean the adults that end up listening to this what what annoyed you the first time was exactly what you found enjoyment yeah. in the second time. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, right. so it, it was, it was just that ability to switch your perspective on what this means to you. And it could right. have been bad jokes and slow play again, but you chose to be mm -hmm. like, no, I'm going to teach them the rules of the game. I'm going to exactly. engage them. Right. I'm going to be mm -hmm. patient. I'm going to recognize the fact that this is actually an opportunity for me to work on patience, something that I know that I need to work on. So yeah. now you're acknowledging that right in the moment and mm -hmm. the whole thing shifts. So instead of being miserable for four and a half hours, you actually aren't, 
you enjoy it, you grow as a person, and you actually yeah. had a hell of a good golf round. Exactly. And it could have it could have been two of the identical rounds, right? Like I could have went straight back to that switch and just been frustrated and mad and upset again, right? But then after talking about it and kind of finding those solutions and those little tips and implementing those, it hundred totally one eighty my game, right? It just yeah, it's crazy how that perspective just switched, right? And same situation, but just different different outcome. So, so cool. Um, yeah, I love that story many of the time. I love getting on the calls with my clients and, and hearing what they're up to and how they how they do it or or, or even I mean sometimes it doesn't go great, right? And we work on that yeah. too. But uh but no, that was just a really cool one. And and again, more of a life thing, but practical in the moment that you can see now going into whatever it is, training camp, being having the wrong D pair, having a coach that maybe isn't driving with you, right? Like there is an opportunity yeah. in those moments to find something that you can shift your perspective and get some enjoyment out of it and still play good hockey. Um yeah. Sure. The next one I had in mind. So, by the way, we should actually tell the audience those aren't familiar. So, you were like, talk a little bit NAX and like they're kind of a production factory, really, right? Like these, these, right. you know, talk about that team, talk about who you're surrounded by and kind of how you were a bit, I guess, can't make a better word than maybe a bit of an outcast when it came to yeah. the fact of like nobody really being recognized, right? Or recognizing. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. So, I went there my second year midget kind of thing. And I showed up three weeks late, like three weeks after everybody kind of thing. And I was a little late and new to the group and kind of that outsider. I never, I never in a million years thought I would have ended up there for that season for the next two seasons. And, but yeah, they were an organization that kind of, they moved kids on to the next level and whether that be WHL or junior A and, and yeah, so I knew it was a really good spot to be at. And that first year we, I think we went 33 and three and yeah, I just had an amazing year at, COVID kind of messed up the playoffs there, but yeah, no, it was, it was crazy to think that I kind of I didn't know that I would be there and ended up there and it worked out to be really good, even though it was a long and tough journey for sure. But it, it ended up just being like they said, kind of thing, trust in the process and, and mm -hmm. going with the flow. So, right. So you're there, you're around guys who are listed, have been drafted or yeah. who, are, who, are, who are actually committed the, the following year, right? To AJ yeah. teams, like to junior A teams. Um, and again, I mentioned it earlier, but you, I mean, your big goal, your, your, you know, your, well, maybe NHL is like the dream, like, but like the, mm -hmm. the goal that you're really shooting for right now is that D1 scholarship. And that's what you had yeah. in your head and that's what you wanted to get. And you knew that that road would go through junior a and you're hoping aj right. or you're hoping bcjhl those were your two spots and you're surrounded right. by these players yet no one's really given you that opportunity like what was that right. like for you just in that environment this 33 and 3 team and and mm -hmm. and sort of being one of the guys that's not quite there yet it was it was definitely tough like um when i went back there for my second year i was the only returning guy from that team the previous year everybody else moved on to whl or junior right so that was obviously a little tough kind of thing and definitely put some doubts in my mind of kind of like what's going on and how, how can that happen? Like with the only guy kind of thing. Right. But it was definitely kind of a blessing in disguise. And I knew, like I knew coming in there, I hadn't been, some of these guys have been there for a couple of years and had that exposure or been drafted and stuff. So being where I was, had been previously kind of thing and where I was as a player, I think I definitely needed that third year midget just to, to get kind of create, close that gap and uh, improve in my game and kind of be that stud in the league and, and just move on from there, get that confidence that I need to get to the next level. And, and then also that opens up for not ending up on a kind of a lower team or a, or a bottom team, kind of that third year would open up like a good team, a good program and, and right. kind of thing like that. So, yeah. But it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an accident. No, because that's yeah, one correct. thing that yeah. I, I kept reminding you about and still to this day remind you about, because the last thing I want to do, is let the players think that they weren't a part of it because mm -hmm. you know we we can get caught up in the success or caught up in like where you end up but you don't you don't really recognize we don't do a good job of recognizing what the heck we did to, to get there right yeah and sure. that off season man like you put in a lot of work we had a lot of intention around what last year was going to be like too right mm -hmm. like yeah. how do you want to show up like how is Carson good going to get recognized this year and who does he need to be within that locker room um, mm -hmm. to one I mean be the leader that you wanted to be and two to earn, yeah. really earn that respect to the coach and then also exactly. to become the player that is going to get noticed and get recognized and get committed to yeah we were really honest about that we recognized mm -hmm. the fact that you know what there's work to do right mm -hmm. yeah 
and you did the work. So maybe like talk about that game plan and maybe what that what that looked like for you, like on the ice, your commitment to your off season, and and, and kind of some of the some of the plans that we had in place there. Um, probably one of the biggest things is we were able to we practiced early in the morning and the ice was ready for us. Like as soon as the rink opened, it was always open early. So I would get on the ice probably half hour, forty five minutes early every day, pretty much, and uh, just get out there. And and we really worked on having first couple times I would just go out there and kind of do the butterfly and, and shoot around but after we talked and, and made that for sure plan then I would go out there and, and do specific skills that I needed to, that I thought would get me to that next level and, and improve my game on and just doing that day in and day out and it definitely improved for sure like huge and, and just kind of got me to that level right and and uh, yeah even and then the off ice same thing um, kind of some guys would end up just not kind of going hard or doing the right things and just messing around and just seeing that kind of motivated me to to dial it in and, and just show that like I was the only guy not committed and these guys are kind of messing around a little bit so right. definitely pushed me to get to that next level and, and say like it's got to come somehow if I do the right things good things happen to good people so yeah and I mean I got to point out there are two things and I'm writing down one of them um but this is during a COVID year for everyone, mm-hmm. listening, right? So this is during a year where no one's playing. These kids were shut down. All they could do was practice and all they could do is work out. And I don't care how much you love hockey. That gets boring. Yeah. Yeah. It gets boring and it's tough to keep your nose down and it's tough to keep committed. And it's tough to stay straight. Um, but man, like you did it. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I think, I mean, you're the one doing it. I was glad to be there to lean on, right? But we talked we talked from day one about standards mm-hmm. and what standards it t- it's going to take for you to get where yep. you want to go and who you yep. need to be within that word of standards. And right. like that, like that's something that's like two high fives because it's one thing to go on the ice early mm-hmm. for the first week. Yeah. And then what happens the second week when I'm tired that one morning and yeah. I don't really feel like it, you know, and what happens yeah. in the third week? Mm-hmm. I, I interview NHL head coaches and players can't commit to something for a month, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but you did, man. It became mm-hmm. part of who you were and your operating system. And not only did you said that you started working on stuff, but you got your coaches involved in that and you got yeah. somebody on board with you to come out there to help you out with that. Like talk about mm-hmm. being an example and a role model. So those were all decisions that you made you decided to uh, follow through on, you mm-hmm. committed to it. And we talked about 20 minutes. And I talk about 20 minutes a lot. I talk about it in my program now, but like that value of like, and you were out there more than 20 minutes sometimes, but 20 yeah. minutes a day yeah, for exactly. a year is 15, it's three weeks of work, three, three, mm-hmm. eight hour work weeks. It's mm-hmm. insane. Like, and yeah. if you're, you're working on your game in a way that is deliberate and intentional, mm-hmm. We're gonna to get to the player you are now and some of the comments that were that were said, but like you put in the work, you put in the work mm-hmm. in the gym when other guys were sitting there on the edge joking around and and you know taking extra water breaks and and, and yeah. not going not going for it, you went for it, and uh, that's hard to do. Yeah, for sure, it's hard to do, man. You know, um, especially in a peer group, especially in a way where people sometimes were scared to stand out. Even if it's yeah. for the right way, sometimes we're scared to stand yeah. out because it's not what everybody's doing. Um, yeah. But buddy, between me and you, and I know that people are listening, but I mean, I told you, forget it. That's what leaders are. Mm-hmm. That's what leaders are. And it's hard to be a leader. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you showed leadership there and that was super cool. And I want to talk about the billet change. So, yeah. So this was the first one for me where I was like, I love the growth of the person because I think the growth of the person uh, elevates the growth of the player and, and accelerates mm-hmm. it. Um, mm-hmm. so a lot of stuff we, we were talking about is off the ice and, and, and how to be and, and who you want to be and how you want to show up. And, and let's talk about the build situation. Obviously there's no, there, there is no, nothing wrong with your billet. Yeah. We, we, I mean, and she served, she was great, but let's talk about that scenario and then what transpired in, in that moment and how difficult that was and how it might not have happened six months earlier. Yeah, that was a yeah, pretty big, uh, moment in my life for sure. So I lived with her previously. Um, it was just her kind of, um, her and me pretty much most majority of the time there. And the first year that was okay. We were on the road all the time and, and with the boys quite a bit and stuff. But that second year with the COVID year, 
we had so much off time and so much downtime that it was just it just got to be too tough mentally for me to not to be alone for that much right and I'm I'm not a guy that likes to sit in my room kind of thing and be alone I'd rather be out with the boys and and or with the family kind of playing with kids and stuff like that so I uh yeah I've through a lot of humming and hawing and do I do it or not I I ended up finding another billet family just down the road that had another kid on my team and I knew him from the previous year too um and they they said yeah whenever I want to I can move in kind of thing and so after yeah making that decision that I wanted to I had to get the get the guts to, to talk to my previous billets about it and that I'm going to make the change and that was probably that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do for sure whether whether it was hard to other people or not but just for me just that relationship with other people like I don't want any bad blood for throughout anybody and stuff like that so I definitely for sure a couple months earlier I definitely would not have made that like that decision I would have just stuck it out there and and uh and stayed at that billet but making that switch made last year a hundred times better like it was night and day kind of thing right just being with a family and and with billet brothers from my team and stuff like that yeah it, it definitely helped help me for sure so it felt good that it paid off and and it was a positive change kind of thing and still talk to my old billets and it no bad blood or anything so yeah it right. definitely it feels good that it paid off and that it everything went smoothly nothing went bad so So once again, thank you for listening. Hope you're getting a ton out of this, um, this interview with Carson. So many great nuggets there. Uh, and I want to uh, pitch the Peak Potential Hockey Project one more time for you. If you have thought about mindset, if you've thought that, you know what, this word, this mental game, mental toughness, resiliency, whatever the word you use to describe mindset, if you think this can help your hockey player, or if you're a hockey player and you think this can help you, but you weren't really sure how or where to start, or what to do with it, this is the course for you. I believe every competitive hockey player should take something like this. I truly do. It's going to make you better. There's going to be something that you are going to be able to level up your game with. I guarantee you that. But this is foundational. You can become a better hockey player legitimately in a week with what I'm teaching you here. Your skills aren't going to develop. You're going to be the same hockey player, but you're going to be able to apply them better. You're going to be able to manage your own situation better. So you can be a force each and every shift, each and every practice. Um, This is honestly stuff that's going to stay with you for the rest of your career. It's four weeks long now, but it doesn't go away, right? It's with you for as long as you want to be a hockey player and as long as you are a human being on this planet. So uh, it starts Monday the 20th. the link is upmyhockey.com and then you look for it under services, Peak Potential Hockey Project. Um, sign up, thank me later. Uh, you'll learn everything that we're talking about here with Carson uh, and uh, and you also get me on the back end in the live group coaching, which I have never done before. So you get access to me on a weekly basis and throughout the week. Now, back to the interview with Carson Good. Well, right, and so I remember like, First of all, we 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 had talked about that situation, but you did not give me the heads up that this is how you were going to handle it, and that you were going through with it. Yeah. And so when you did it, I was like, "Holy smokes!" Because for those listening, like, how old were you at the time? Sixteen. Uh, yeah, 16? sixteen. Sixteen. So sixteen years old. There's a lot of ways for a sixteen year old to handle that, other than invite your billet to a conversation at the dinner table and explain that face to face and look her in the eyes. Mm-hmm. Like that's. To me, that's the leadership way. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of grown men, grown women that would have a hard time doing that. You could have had the coach yeah. do it, the GM. You could have had there could have been a lot of different. We could have had mom or dad do it. There could have been a mm. lot of ways for you to handle that, and mm. you took it upon yourself to do it. You were nervous as all heck. <laughs> yeah, but but it worked. And the thing was though, because you did it, because yeah. you chose to make that decision and you handled it, and it worked out well. Like you said, it felt good. Like it it feels more than good right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah, definitely the relief was, was major and it, it just felt so, yeah, it was just nice that it kind of worked out and nobody got hurt and that respect factor from her and everybody else, right? Like she understood and, and yeah, so just kind of all I could ask for that came out of it. So. Yes. I love it. And I just think that that's a great, because that's like a little teaser for like what's happened down the road, even, you know, Mm -hmm. like this conversation with, with an adult in a position kind of of authority that you were able to manage and empower yourself to, to, to have this conversation, to right. handle it, right. To right. do it, 
Tabby come out on the other side. Nobody gets hurt. All these things I was worried about. Hey, I didn't really have to worry about them, right? It's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, and the other one too, like I think this was a smaller moment for you, but I thought it was huge because we had talked so much about leadership and we talked so much mm -hmm. about you really wanting to have a letter or be a captain there this year, or be recognized as such, even though NAX doesn't usually put it on the jerseys. Um, yeah. And there was a situation in school where this, this substitute teacher came in and um, Carson is always polite and, and uh, respectful. And, and I think he called her pretty good looking, I think was about as far as you went with it. And, uh, and I guess some of the boys were giving her a hard time on Carson's team and, and, he, and he didn't like it. Yeah. And he didn't like it. So Carson gets on the call with me. He's like, Hey, this happened. I didn't really like it. And so we just had a chat. Like, so what can, what can we do? What, what could you do? What would mm -hmm. Sidney Crosby do? Do you think, or yeah. how would so-and-so handle it? Or what, what would the best version of you do? And he's like, I should probably tell her that that's not an example of who we are and what we're all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and so there was another opportunity. Like I'm sure we'll talk about that. So, so Carson goes in and has this conversation with a substitute teacher. That he's never met on behalf of the teammates that are being goofs to kind of say, Hey, we're not like that. We're not like yeah. that was a bad day. Like talk about that and how that was. Yeah. It's a lot. Like I said, like um, she was definitely good looking for sure. And, the boys took it a little too far, I think. And, and it was just a situation that kind of put a bad name on us. Right. And, and, um, she, she was part of uh, a couple other communities and had friends and, and stuff like that. Right. So you don't want the, the name of our program kind of thing, getting out or whether she would tell people about it or not kind of thing. But I just wanted to make sure like it was, yeah. And like our, our kind of coaching staff and program talked to, talk to us about it too but I wanted to make sure that she she knew that that wasn't us right Cause she was there for however long and and I didn't want it to be kind of kind of bad like that right because it definitely for her that could be pretty tough and, and pretty intimidating for 20 guys to be hockey guys to be kind of doing that stuff to her so no I just wanted to to make sure that she was she was good and knew that 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 wasn't us and that she'll she'll get an apology kind of thing and that that uh yeah, the, the boys aren't usually like that kind of thing. And right. to have that respect for her was something they needed to, to, to have. So super proud. I was so proud of you for that. Like that's a hard thing to do again. Um, but again, so you stepped up to the plate, you did something that mm -hmm. necessarily you didn't really want to do, but you knew yeah. you should do right. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we've done a lot of talking about that too. Sometimes those are the things that you really have to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and then again, so there's another opportunity to prove to yourself that, hey, I am capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. um, I can align. I can align yeah. right with what's inside and what I know to be true. And and even that alignment allows me to be the hockey player that I want to be. And I'm going to go to bat here. Yeah. Um, exactly. So anyways, I was this I was like, wow, man, like and again. For where we end up, the Cranbrook, Cranbrook Colts or Cranbrook Bucks, sorry. You're part of the organization now. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of people. Mm -hmm. of a, what I call a character person. A person that I want not only on my hockey team, but I want in my dressing room. That I want to be able to go for dinner with. That I want to yep. be able to have my sons hang out with and be a good example. Yeah. Right? They're going to be a good example of the community. Uh, mm -hmm. An outstanding member of the association. And, yeah. and you know I mean? And that's... And you are that, right? And and that mm -hmm. obviously that never happened because I was involved. You have amazing parents and you're an amazing kid on your own. But like being allowed to elevate that and empowering exactly. that, right? And mm -hmm. understanding that this is this is okay for me mm -hmm. to allow these traits and who I am to to step forward. And like that's the part that I love being a part of is like yeah. you know, allowing that to exist and believe yeah. that this is actually the right thing. So super exactly. cool. Like let's let's get into the SJ. So so after this crazy COVID year, you're grinding mm -hmm. it out every day before practice. You're going hard in the gym. You're doing the stuff in the off season. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously you had your ups and downs, but you were committed. Uh, you were mm -hmm. committed in a way that a lot of people weren't. weren't. Yeah. I said all the way through COVID, you remember us having that conversation is that people are taking time off right now. Yeah. Yep. People are shutting it down because it's boring, because it's hard, because there's no mm -hmm. games. And this is your chance. If you mm -hmm. want it to be your chance, because you got to close yeah. that gap. So you did. Yeah. So you close the gap, you close the gap, you close the gap. You don't have a chance to really show it off in games. Yeah. But you do have this one little small sample size. Mm -hmm. And then do well, really well, actually. And the SJHL calls, and it's Rich Pilon, like a 14-year NHLer, and he wants you to come 
to their team. Talk about mm-hmm. that first of all, and then what what happened with all that. Yeah, so that was um, kind of in and around Christmas and and stuff like that, and just having conversations and stuff. And being from Brooks, I'll, I've always been around the Bandits, and they're a pretty good organization, a winning organization. It's just kind of always been a goal of mine to be in the in the AJHL and play there and and play against or for the Bandits, but. Um, and then as I got older, kind of having that BCHL come into play too, is something that I knew and learned about. And then, so that's also kind of was added to another one of my goals, either BC or, or AJ, just because of their reputations and, and stuff like that. And, and kind of the like personal goal and dream of mine is something like that. Right. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, um, that process was, was tough, really tough, not getting any, any other looks or any other offers. Um, and there was days I, I texted you and said, like, is it a bad thing? Like, I think I'm going to take this offer kind of thing, right? And given up. And, but no, I was just stuck to it and, and never screwed anybody around. Like, it was, it was all open conversation kind of thing. And having those talks with Rich and with other teams, and it definitely built my character even more kind of thing and, and broadened my horizon for that whole process. I hadn't really been a part of that kind of thing or committed right. to one team early. So, seeing those different teams and different coaches, how they approach themselves and how they kind of offer or get me to go is, was pretty cool actually. And definitely helped me know which ones were good, which ones were bad and kind of thing like that. And yeah, I was grateful for as much as the process sucked. I was, it definitely made me better for sure in the long run. So, well, I remember, I remember you, uh, cause just to break that down a little bit for, for people who, who are listening. So, I mean, no, no disregard or disrespect to the SJHL, but exactly. they, just, yeah. they just don't produce as many Div One committed players. That's just mm-hmm. that's just facts, right? So, yeah. so committing to the SJ wasn't really in line with Carson's whole, I mean, scenario of where he wanted to end yeah. up. It would have been a longer road. It would have been a harder road, uh, and mm-hmm. he knew that. He, he also understood that this was an amazing opportunity too, right? Somebody mm-hmm. didn't want him, so he was exactly. really fucking really torn. Yeah. And uh, and he, he really enjoyed Rich Pilon. Like Rich Pilon mm-hmm. seemed like he was treating him with a ton of respect and and yeah. giving him space to make to make the decision. Um, mm-hmm. But I remember us having that conversation, Carson. You're just like, well, what what do I say to him? Like I I don't really want to commit right now. I want to see what else happens. I want to have an opportunity to play. And yeah. um, and I remember telling him, I said, just tell him the truth. Yeah. And uh, and not that that was it was not shocking to you at all, but you're like, yeah, I'm True. gonna tell him the truth, you know, yeah. like because we do get in our head about that, right? Like, what does he want to hear? What should I say? What can I say? And I'm like, there's yeah. absolutely nothing wrong with your intention here. And if you are honest with what you tell him, he's yeah. gonna respect that. And at least exactly. you can leave the conversation knowing that, hey, I said what was true to me, no and, matter what uh, happens, and, yeah, right. And there was your third now in my mind, like the third big conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right where you're standing there, there's not an agent representing you. Yeah. There's not a representative. There's not mum or dad. It's not me on the phone. It's you and Rich Pilon, and you're telling them exactly where you're at and yeah. exactly what you want and exactly how you would like it to happen with complete exactly. respect to him. And that went yeah. fine, right? Yeah, just like the billet thing. It, it all worked out perfectly fine, right? Yeah. So, which is really wild because we build it up and what who but the thing is when you are aligning like with with what you got on the inside what's in your head yeah. with where you want to go like that is authentic and authenticity mm-hmm. prevails right mm-hmm. so like the fact that you were able to stand in there in your own shoes and be able to say that like super proud of you um yeah. and then like but you were this close a few times right yeah. like the committee yeah more than once for sure yeah it got a couple dark days and a couple tough tough where i was just second guess and I was like what am I doing here right like I worked worked my butt off for how long and kind of kept my head down and definitely you're odd everybody's um open to those days where it just gets to be too much and you're just done with it kind of thing right but but yeah there was a couple times I remember texting you kind of thing and just yeah needed that little push or and that little kind of boost and yeah it was it was definitely a tough process but well it was just and I think for you and I just again really circling the wagons and saying, well, where do you, where, first of all, where are you good enough to be an AJHL player? Exactly. And you're like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, where do you want to play in the AJ? Mm-hmm. Well, all right then. Right. And if those, if those are yeses, yeah, then we got to believe in ourselves and we got to, we got to run it out, you know, and we yeah. got to see what's going to happen there. And 
Um, so it was just kind of gut check a little bit, right? Like, yes, yeah. you know, and, um, and the ironic thing is, which I'll just fill in the blanks there, Rich Peel ends up getting fired. The mm -hmm. one buddy that you had there ends up getting traded, yeah. right? Or yeah. whatever, like two of the big reasons you were going to go there. So yeah. what maybe would have been maybe okay, turned out that it probably wouldn't have been good at all. Yeah, I would have definitely been upset. Yeah, if it turned out the way it did, and I kind of, and I did commit to there for sure. So it was definitely a blessing in disguise. Right. Sure. So again, staying true, staying authentic, being a leader for yourself, mm -hmm. right, and being being really clear on what you want and what mm -hmm. it is that you I mean you think you are capable of. Like these yeah. things matter. Like they totally yeah. matter because they keep you in line, um, mm -hmm. or aligned, I should say as well. Um, the next thing I'm going to get jump around. So. I put out this course um, for those people listening called Guide to Thrive, and that was during COVID. And it was, it was for all these players who didn't have this, didn't weren't able to play games, and they were just like Carson, who wanted to be at a level that they weren't recognized yet to be at, or they wanted to be somewhere. And it's like, well, what do you do? Like, you can't get in front of scouts. Like, you can't. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to play. I wasn't able to show my skills, and people were were down, and, and athletes didn't know what to do. And one of the, one of the. Uh, big points that the people that I interviewed said time and time again was don't be afraid to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to make a call because these play these teams, they all need players too. They need players, right? And they can't see yeah. everybody, so they couldn't see everybody. So they're in a weird year too. So don't be shy. And and so what does Carson do? But I don't know why you picked them, Cars. I never did ask you that, but you're like, do you know anyone at the Cranbrook? And I'm like, sorry, man, I don't. I guess you're gonna have to yeah. look the website. So you like, why did you pick Cranbrook? And 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 let's talk about that. Yeah, um, I knew I didn't know too much about him actually, just a little bit. And then my coach told me. So we played those three games in in June. Just had that little showcase right before when the COVID restrictions lifted. And my coach said that Cranbrook um, approached them about okay. myself, just general general interest kind of thing. And um, so they, the, my coach told me that and I just kind of left it at that and didn't hear anything. And then I, yeah, once again, I kind of hummed and hawed a little bit and I knew, I knew it was the right thing to do and, and stuff like that. But yeah, obviously. So when I made the decision to, that I wanted to reach out to them, I talked to you and didn't have, I didn't really know kind of have an in there. Um, so I, I ended up going on the website looking for no contact information. So I called their, their front office and, and she gave me um the head coach ryan donald the email got his email kind of thing and then i emailed them just a, a generic kind of thing about me and talking about myself and then i would love to get on the phone with him and have a chat and kind of get to know him a little bit better and see if that was the right fit for myself and yeah look uh it actually it worked out quite a bit really good so yeah it was pretty cool that that uh that played out and it definitely took a lot of courage to do that i was pretty nervous and stuff like that and especially not having a direct phone call or email or whatever. So yeah, no, it, yeah, it worked there was out no, really good. There was no cushy, soft. Again, I hope everyone listening, th th this isn't this isn't Carson's agent making this call. This isn't the player representative that everyone wants to have from the age of 14 now. This is Carson yeah. picking up the phone, doing the work, making himself known, making his intention known, being brave enough and courageous enough and humble enough and all those things that you have to do to do that. And guess what? He gets a phone call because you know how darn rare it is that a 17 or 18 year old kid is going to be willing to do that. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen anymore. So that you were able to do that. All of a sudden you get a call from Ryan Donald. They obviously knew you, right? Like they've watched mm -hmm. other people and they were interested, yeah. but for whatever reason, people get busy. People forget the phone rings. Who knows? Right. Yeah. They weren't yeah. reaching out. They weren't pursuing you. They stopped calling yeah. the coach, but you called them. He calls you. And now here we are. You're in a, you're in a billet house in Cranbrook. And uh, and you're going to play in the BCHL, one of the highest producing player rates for D1 scholarships there is in North America, and mm -hmm. um, and you did it. Yeah, yeah, you did it, man. Like yeah. you did it. Talk yeah. about empowerment, man. Like uh, if if there's anything I hope that you've learned is that like how much you are capable of. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, how much you're sure. capable of, and and when a dream's big and when a goal means something, is that you know you do things that are uncomfortable to see if they're mm -hmm. happening, and sometimes those uncomfortable things aren't as uncomfortable as you actually thought they were going to be. Yeah, exactly. That's the that was one of the craziest things, right? You you talk it up in your head so much, and you're so nervous, and then you you hang up the phone, and you're like, oh, that actually that was not as bad as I thought it was, and <laughs> it's crazy, and and that I'm sure it'll change eventually, but still hasn't. You still have that. 
that mindful talk and you're still nervous as ever right. and but then you get off the phone it's like oh that's not too bad at all so but it does get easier right exactly it yeah does get for, easier. Sure. for sure it gets easier mm-hmm. um yeah so the the other two quick stories that i wanted to share because they just talk about how you know change doesn't happen overnight not not mm-hmm. from a mindset spot not from a physical skill set spot but putting the work in over time and putting one good day on top of the other does make a difference and and mm-hmm. tell tell us that story um that I know is you were really proud of because it was somebody that you respect and has seen you for a long time and for a, a place that you wanted to play. But that was the coach of the Brooks Bandits at that at that one uh, that mini kind of tournament you were talking about. Just talk about yeah. talk about playing there, how you felt on the ice, and then what those comments were. Yeah, so I was in that. It's called the Sticks tournament. It was in Calgary. I was actually playing for usually like Drumheller and a couple other teams. I'll put just prospects in it as as their kind of team or whatever just to see them and so I was on I was playing for Weyburn's team just as a prospect kind of thing and and uh yeah I, I hadn't I hadn't played a game in three months kind of thing two three months and yeah I just I went into the weekend and and just had fun I didn't I didn't overthink or prepare to I prepared obviously but I didn't like think about it or overthink and stress myself out I just went out and had fun and and enjoyed it it was probably one of the funnest weekends I've had and and yeah, it it worked out really well. I played really well. Um, had some some really good comments and talking to like the Brooks coach kind of thing. He was there. They had a couple guys prospects in it and stuff. And he kind of just said like, uh, "You've come a lot farther than I thought." Basically, is what he said kind of thing. And and uh, that was pretty eye opener for me. Was was somebody acknowledging that and and seeing the the growth I've had and how far I've come is, it was pretty cool for sure. Well, he even said something else. He was, I have no, I have no reason to say this to you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what he said before. Yeah. Yeah. And he's no like, nor, nor would I usually have it, any reason to, but like, and just acknowledge like your growth. Mm-hmm. Like that is super cool. And again, cause we can get lost in our own growth because it's yeah. small and it's incremental and it's little baby steps after little baby steps. But when someone hasn't yeah. seen you for two, three months or four months or five months, now they're like, yeah. where'd this guy come from? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like that's fantastic. And that must have yeah. felt so amazing. Yeah, that was pretty cool for sure. And then what happened from that actually? Let's even talk about that. So then he, he liked you so much mm-hmm. that, that he, you, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, he, he kind of, we talked about that and about that, how he seen me and gave me the opportunity to, to go to their camp and, and train with their, one of the best teams in, in Alberta and, and kind of prepare for my, for my Cranbrook camp. So that was pretty cool to, for him to allow me to do that. Right. And, and kind of have that faith and that, holy crap, he's definitely competing and even leaving. And he kind of said like, you didn't look out of place here and that's probably one of the best teams in the AJHL. So. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out really good, and it definitely helped me out a lot to prepare me for this upcoming season. So that's so great. Um, and then I wrote down that one other one, which I know was nice to you. So, like, here's a guy. So Carson, um, I don't know. Like, I, I wrote a post about you last week, and I and I said mm-hmm. that you're a player kind of without an identity. And I don't know if mm-hmm. you if you agree with that or not, but that was just that was the way I wrote it because you're, yeah, you know, you you weren't really labeled like, and usually guys who get listed, I mean, the people that have been in hockey world, like either like you're, you're a definite stay at home defenseman, you're, yeah. you're a physical defenseman, you're a power play defense defenseman. Like there's something that people can say, okay, he's going to be this guy for me on my team. Yeah, exactly. And and you were kind of a guy that did a little bit of everything. You know, you weren't really mm-hmm. a power play guy. You liked the penalty kill and you took pride yeah. in that. You weren't overly physical. You defended well, you're not a big guy, right? You mm-hmm. skate well, but maybe mm-hmm. not amazingly. You know, yeah. so kind of like, kind of this, I don't know what the right word is, but like, mix you know, everything. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's just like not one thing. Like you're not, you're not a thing. So, um, so in, 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 in growing those skills and you wanted to become more defensive and you wanted to work on, you know, on your skating and your edges and all these things that you're working on there before practice. Mm-hmm. Now you're starting to grow your confidence. You're growing your game. You're exactly. becoming more well-rounded. Um, and you're at the skate with Brooks and yeah. t- let's talk about that. Yeah, it was uh, all those things that I worked on, whether it be on ice or off ice, they all kind of came together. And like you said, there wasn't one thing where I was super good and then one thing that lacked. It was kind of, they were all kind of just a bunch of different things put together. And I think that was one of the biggest things is is I didn't choose just one thing to work on for the entire season. It was each one of those things just to slowly move that 
move those levels of, of uh, how good they were kind of thing. And like, whether it be skating or shooting or even like composure with the puck, stuff like that. And I think working on each thing a little bit every day, it just all piled up to be to the point where they all, I'm still kind of good at a little bit of everything. And then, but they all got better, right? They're, they're not just good. They're kind of great now. Right. So that definitely helped them. And getting to that Brooks camp, it was, I kind of thought I would be pretty, like I, I didn't know where I would fit in. And, and it, it actually, I think I grew as the camp went on and got more comfortable and settled in and stuff and the nerves went away, but no, I definitely didn't feel out of place and I felt, felt good out there and that carried over to the skate we had today. And, and I'm sure that'll keep carrying over. So. So yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. love what you said there, but I'm talking about you're standing there at the blue line. You just finished this drill. Um, you're, you're in, you're in Brooks, this, this committed university oh, yeah. player that's on that's on Brooks coming back. He's already been committed to by a D1 team, and he comes over, and what does he say? Uh, are you, like, where are you committed to, basically? Meaning, meaning yeah. university. Yeah, yeah. Right, meaning university. So, like, oh, my God, like, I can imagine you. So this guy's watching you do these drills. He's already mm-hmm. been committed. He wants to know what university you're going to, and you're like, shit, <laughs> man. I just got committed to to the BCJHL. Yeah, yeah, right. Like what a like what a cool winning moment though that must have been for you. Well, I know it was. Yeah. For you, I knew you were being yeah. on the inside and you shared it with me. But I think that's pretty wild. Yeah, it was definitely definitely not expected at all, and it kind of came out of nowhere. And I was, I just thinking of myself after that. I was like, oh, like it just put things into perspective even more, right? It just brought me down to earth and kind of thing that I was a lot closer to that than than I thought before he said that. So right. it was a pretty cool moment for me, for sure. Yeah, and just and just it it also like like the comments from the Brooks coach, like that it it kind of it makes it real. Exactly. Like, like it, other people can see me be a different player, and I'm getting comments mm-hmm. because of the work that I've done. Like talk yeah. about reinforced confidence. Talk about reinforce the 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 uh, the idea of committing to a process, right? Yeah. Thinking long term and not short term, yeah. which is. For those listening right now, like, oh my gosh, like if you can, we're in such an instant gratification world, right? Where we want everything Mm. now. We want it yesterday, actually. You know, we don't get it in five seconds. We're rattled. Like if we can get our hockey mindset around the fact of this is a marathon, not a sprint, and we can really fall in love with the process of like being really identifying with the fact that like I do the hard things and I do them consistently and I do them well. Like when you build Mm. that into your into your DNA, um, like cars has like, man, you got an advantage because you, mm-hmm. those guys just keep getting better. And that's the thing that mm-hmm. Carson and I still work on is like, well, you don't get comfortable now. Like, what was that? That was like, yeah. that was like one day. Right. Like where I was like, the okay, next we're celebrating, yeah. but that's done. <laughs> yeah. Take the rest of the day and then we're on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause you can't get comfortable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I've told you that before. That was the one thing that I did. I kind of forgot the fact that I could get better. At like mm-hmm. 22, 23, I kind of forgot that I could get better. And that was the complete wrong mindset to have because it never ends. And and if right. you want to keep pushing up the volume and, and turning that knob, um, it's going to work, right? And I yeah. think that now 18 months in, like you <laughs> you, you believe it, you know, and mm-hmm. you're going to keep doing yeah. that and you're going to make Cranbrook super proud, buddy. I know you, I, I know you are um, for making mm-hmm. that decision and, and, uh, and going out and committing to you. And I, I can't wait to follow you this year, man. Um, yeah. Any any last words for anyone out there? Maybe anyone who wants to be a BCHL player and isn't quite there yet themselves. Any any words of encouragement or advice? Uh, just trust the process. I think that's the biggest thing that so many people have told me. So many like the people that are helping me out for this through this journey of of uh, that. And you just you just got to believe it. Whether they whether they end up right or wrong, it'll it'll make you a better person pretty much. And and I had to believe that. And it, and it definitely the process came to reward me for trusting it. So I'd say that was probably the biggest piece of advice that I took away from this whole journey is kind of trust that process and trust what you're doing. And, and yeah, good things will come. That's probably because it, yeah, it took a while, but good things definitely did start to come. So it was, it was, yeah, crazy process. But, yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. It was such a long journey to get there. And now it's really just beginning. Like that's kind of what we thought exactly. about right now. And now yeah. you're on to the next, the next hunt, right? The next phase. Yeah. Um, and just falling in love with that chase is, is really cool. So yeah. good on you, man. Like super proud. Um, there was lots of times where the others would have quit and packed it in or, you know, I yeah. thought maybe this isn't for me, uh, taking yeah. an easier route, but, um, but you were rewarded, uh, with 
with ending up in an amazing spot in an amazing league. And uh, can't wait to keep following you and cheering you on. Uh, I guess the other thing I'll, I'll just say to add to that is like, I love what you talked about with the process there. I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll just bookend that with don't underestimate the value of thinking yourself as how to improve as a person. Because mm-hmm. I think as hockey players, especially young hockey players, we're always thinking about shot and skate and, and, and these types of things. But yeah. to really fall in love with the process and to buy in like you did, Carson, you had to, you had to upgrade and you had to up level yeah. and you had to, download some new beliefs about yourself and some new standards and those standards mm-hmm. are allowed these hockey skills to grow um mm-hmm. so that's just a little bit of a different perspective for some of you people out there that, that are listening maybe some of you players maybe even some of the coaches out there but like believe that the development of the person is going to help the development of the athlete yeah. and exactly. um and yeah man like i said and you end up being at the end of the day you end up being a better hockey player in some way that people want to have in your dressing room because you're going to be a great role model yeah. example for others so um, yeah, sure. super proud of you, super proud of your parents for having, for, for being such great support, um, f- for you and, yeah. uh, and Cranbrook for recognizing that they got a heck of a player on their hands. So buddy, yeah. thanks so much for sharing your time with us. Um, no problem. Thank you. you did a great job again. Thanks. I told him this was just practice for all the interviews he's going to have to be doing with Cranbrook <laughs> this year. Um, yeah. you got one in the books there, but, um, in, enjoy camp. Um, have a great, have a great run there. And, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be watching you here in Vernon. We'll be in touch. Yeah, awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me and yeah, helping me out throughout the whole the whole journey and the journey to come. So that's you, buddy. I'm right there by your side. Cheers, man. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Carson, for doing that. You were fantastic. What an amazing guest. Uh can't wait to watch you this year. Can't wait for your bus to travel through Vernon and, and I'll be able to watch you in that Bucks uniform and, and see you kicking butt and taking names um, and just continuing on your development. And for all you other hockey players out there, I really encourage you to invest in yourselves, invest in your mental game, invest in the person you need to be in order to become the hockey player you want to be. They go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Find a way to work on that mindset, to work on your approach to the game so you can become a better hockey player uh, without improving your stick handling, without having to improve your skating. It just up levels you almost overnight. It's one of the only things that I can think of that where you can do that, where you can apply a new perspective with new intention um, and new dedication to your game that's going to allow you to be a more desirable, better equipped hockey player. Um, and like I said earlier throughout this program, the Peak Potential Hockey Project is that tool. It is something that I created. It's something that I wished I had as a player. Um, my goodness, somebody to walk me through and to guide me through some of these concepts and perspectives to open my eyes on what's available for me, not only from a developmental standpoint, but also from a performance standpoint and a, and a, and a way to be able to handle uh, adversity with confidence and new situations and opportunities with confidence. Um, this, this kind of stuff simply just didn't exist um, when I was around. It honestly didn't exist until I created this course. I believe this is the best product on the market, plus you get me in your back pocket to support you along the way. I don't just sell you this thing and then it's done. You get me to help you apply the tactics and the skills and the techniques to your game. So take advantage of it. Um, it opens. Uh, it's open right now. Registration uh, closes on the 19th uh, and, the, and the course begins on the 20th. I do roll through five-week cycles with this thing, so if you missed this time, by all means, check out the website. There will be another session or another cohort, as I, as I call it, starting soon enough, and you can get on the wait list for that. But right now, this time of year, right before the season starts, I highly recommend you get involved in this one because the timing is perfect. Cheers, everybody. Play hard. Keep your head up.